Hello everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to my test world and today I am going to show you how to build a Thorncraft super node. For example, I have all of these things here. These all require V or C V from my um from an energized aura node. And I'm gonna show you how to build a really big one that can power all of these things. So to start off with you need to find one of these things. Zoom in. This is a hungry node. And they're quite rare. So you might have trouble finding them in the world. I just MBT edited this one to be hungry. I give it one of the hunger aspect and it's getting terror from the things it's picked up. So this is quite interesting. So you can see it's picking up the dirt around it and then it's absorbing the terror aspect from that dirt. And this is how we're going to make a super node out of this. It's also killing the dryad. Goodbye dryad. Do we have any aspects? No you don't. So it wouldn't get anything from there. Um, but it's not picking up the obsidian. So the first thing we probably want to do is surround it in obsidian. So um, we can't get sucked in by it. So let's do this. Surround it in obsidian. I'm doing this in survival mode. It's quite dangerous. And now we have a nicely surrounded hungry node. That is no longer well will no longer kill me because I can't get in there. The obsidian is in the way. So the next thing we want to do is feed it to grow its aspect count. So I decided that the best thing to feed it with is gold because it has lucrum on it. And lucrum Basically it breaks down into all of the primal aspects eventually. So I've got a little A system here with a creative cell containing gold. A little timer here which will export gold ingots every time this timer pulses. And then I've got this thing, an item cannon from open blocks, which will basically fire items from that chest. So there we are. <laughs> it fires a gold ingot out of our IE system every time that happens. So we can shift right click on that and we can go over here and right click on the node. We should see, there we are, now our gold should be being fired into the node. If we, if we, look, if we look at the aspects that it has, let's just go up like that should be able to see that it gains gold. There we are, we got a Padicio. And then we got an air. There we are, we got an Ignis. And now we have all five, six, all six primal aspects. And we can just leave this for a long time and it will collect more and more of the primal aspects so we can get it up to I don't know so let's say a hundred of each one I'm gonna say five hundred of each one because I have the power of MPT editing so let me edit this aura node to have loads and loads of aspects in and then we'll come back Okay, so once you've got your 500 aspect node, thanks to the magic of MBT editing, uh, all you have to do is surround it with obsidian, like this to make a complete obsidian cube. And then what you want to do is put oak wood slabs or any wooden half slab on top here. Right, now for the tricky bit. Let's do it in U1. So now, we, what you have to do is you basically have to right click on this to equal trade the obsidian for glass and as soon as that's done then you need to right click on it with another wand to convert it into a node in a jar. So let's give this a try. Lovely. And now we have a node in a jar. We can just break that. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. Look at that hungry node in a jar. Now, 
you have to stabilize it, stop it from being hungry. But of course, you can't put your node stabilizer down without it being eaten. So what's the way around this? Well, you have to convert it into another type of node. So one way of doing this is by using taint. And taint is quite good. Let me get rid of this one. This is another node I was playing around with earlier. Uh, so we can spread taint with this. It might be easier and cheaper just to go to a naturally spawning taint fire and put it in there. But since we have cheats, then we can do it this way. So pop our node down, right click with a wand to release. And there we are, we have our hungry node in the taint biome. Now just be aware that at each time you move it using the node in a jar method, then there is a small chance that you um, you turn the node into a pale or fading node, which aren't quite as good. Um, so just be aware of that, you might want to use something like a blood magic teleposer to do it. So eventually, after this has been in our tainted biome for a while, so you have to check in the top, check that this says tainted land where the node is. If we press S3 as well, we can see it says it says tainted land all around here. Our node is. And so the node will eventually be converted into a tainted node. Let's wait for that to happen. So, after a while in the tainted biome, the tainted lands biome, our node will eventually become converted into a tainted node. And this will no longer suck you in. Put my helmet back on. I can actually see this. It looks like this. It says tainted thermometer. So now, all we have to do is surround it once more with glass. So now all we have to do is right click with this one will do. Hopefully. There we are. And now we have another node in the jar. And now all we have to do, quite simple. See now this has turned into a pale node. Not quite so good. But now all we have to do is get a node stabilizer. Oh, we already have these, don't we? So, a stabilizer, pop the jar on top of it, and a transducer. Come on. Come on. Why can't I put this down properly? Lovely. And then on top of the transducer, you want a block of redstone. Like so. And then, all one has to do is right click with a wand to break this. And then you can see it's sucking our aspects out of the, out of the node. Should be getting smaller. And there we go. We have converted the node and it produces 20 produces 20 centivis a second. You can see we're getting stuff flowing into here, we're getting our shock focus has been upgraded. It should be charging the wand. In here. We throw some aspects in here. And they should be all melted down. Oh, there we are. It's ignited. We can see it's also getting terror here. See, getting earth aspects from here to produce our crystallized essences. And it's all working very nicely. So there we are, that's how to create a massive aura node like this one. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.